Hey everyone, Mike Vogel here for the Monumental Network and welcome to a very special conversation with Caps captain Alex Ovechkin. Last year, Ovechkin played in his 10th NHL season, became the Caps all-time leading goal scorer. This season, he's become the NHL's all-time leading Russian goal scorer and scored his 500th career goal. You get to spend some time with us today sharing some of those memories and what's ahead for Alex as well. Alex, first, thanks for spending some time with us today. And I'm, I'm interested to know what, when you think back to your childhood and your start in this game, what, what are your earliest memories of, of playing the game? Just uh, like I love the game so much because, uh, you know, um, my friends and uh, my family uh, all love uh, hockey. Obviously, everybody loves the sports, but I get lucky to be in Dynamo School and uh, working uh, with the great coaches since I uh, was a little kid. And uh, you know, they give me that uh, kind of uh, trust and um, you know, work ethic what they give it from me, and uh, I give it to them back. At what age or how old you, were you when you figured that that this is something you could you could make a living doing? Yeah, obviously, every kid. Uh, have a dream to be a hockey player, professional hockey player. Obviously, uh, somebody. Uh, sometimes you have luck. Sometimes you have ability to um, be in the right spot in a good time. People who was around me helped me a lot. Dynamo was uh, probably a very good uh, uh, time for me to get success. I'm talking to some of your peers and some of your contemporaries, some of the guys who, a little bit before you and a little bit after you played in in Russia and grew up there. They said. They were on the ice five, six times a day, and, and uh, practice was constant. Was it, was it that way for you too? Yeah, obviously. Um, I have uh, when I was a little kid, I was at uh, um, I have a practice at uh, six or seven in the morning. Then I go to the school, and after the school, I go back to uh, you know, practice uh, again, and then I start stay and for another one. I started a little bit late. Uh, my family wanted me to catch up the, all the players, uh, all the guys who uh, have a good uh, skating ability, like uh, puck handling. So uh, we were working out with my first coach uh, uh, together, and uh, well, you can see right now what, how it's uh, how it's work. What was it like for you to play in the Super League when you were 16 years old? It was a great time for me. When coach tell me like I'm gonna play tomorrow like I was uh, nervous I call my mom my, my parents and I tell like uh, tomorrow I'm gonna be my first game and uh, the videotape it so they have it I was in my first shift I hit uh, the guy pretty badly and uh, you know it's uh, kind of remind me my first game in NHL and uh, first shift and first shift there and then by the time you were 18 you were playing uh, on the first line at what point were you sure that you could you had the ability, you had what it took to play in the NHL. I have a uh, good influence uh, from my parents, uh, my coaching. Coaching uh, Billy Dinoff uh, worked hard with me, like he was very hard on me on the practice. All the details, all the kind of stuff. So, you know, the trust what I have from the coaches was uh, very, uh, very important for me as well. Well, your parents are obviously very proud of you and they were both athletes themselves. What attributes do you think you got from each one of your parents? Like wh which parts of your mom and which parts of your dad do you see in yourself? My mom obviously I take from my mom play sense, you know, when you play like because she was a uh, number one uh, basketball woman basketball player in the world. That kind of uh, mindset, like I took it from her, uh, the skills the same. But from my dad, I just take uh, his body, you know, like a uh, big body and uh, big bone. So That's perfect, <laughs> right? It worked out well. Yeah, it worked out well, yeah. I remember you telling me, and, and you've, you've said this to others as well, Owen Nolan was, was a guy that you looked up to in the NHL back then, and obviously Sergei Fedorov. What were the attributes in common with those guys that made them guys that you wanted to make yourself like? When you're growing up, you just want to be like them. And obviously, you just want to meet them or shake your hands. But I get lucky to play with those guys my first couple of years. When you look at the way you play the game now, physical, scoring goals and stuff, it's similar to Owen Nolan. Were you that kind of player before you started liking Owen Nolan? Or did Owen Nolan influence you that way? Back then, like it's, it was hard to uh, watch the games because there was no internet. It was. Uh, uh, no uh, TV, no, no cable TV, you know, it's, we just uh, look at the um, news from uh, Russian newspapers and uh, obviously we, we buy, uh, you know, uh, videotape and watch all the highlights and all kind of stuff. Um, so all in all, like uh, how I said, my favorite team was San Jose and uh, like I just uh, was a fan of them. 
From the first time I saw you play, which was at the World Juniors in Grand Forks, uh, North Dakota, and the two things that to me were most noticeable were your motor, your, your drive, just that you only go one speed, full speed, and your joy, how happy you are, not just when you score, but when someone else scores on your team. And uh, 10 years later, I still see both of those things. Where do you think those came from? And are they still what they were when you were a boy? As soon as like I, I, you step in the ass, you have to know like, or now or never. Back then, like I want to be the best. I have a challenge. I always challenge myself when I'm in the ass. Like if you're not gonna get success right now, you you don't have to play hard. So I always uh, put in my, myself in that kind of position.